and this is probably the most romantic proposal story you've ever heard in your life, but I busted out a guitar, I blindfolded you, and I took you to a mountaintop, and I got on one knee, and I just sang you a song that I had written for years. It was amazing. What are you do, laughing about? I still have the song here. I could p play a little bit. Um, and I had these vows written down, but I was too nervous. I was shaking. You know? <laughs> the love of my life over here. I should probably let you tell the story. <laughs> Hey Love Winners, it's Law86 here with another video, and today I'm here with Vivi. Could you, would you ever guess that I'd have Vivi as a special guest on my channel? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I'm so special. So good to have you here. Oh. So good to have you here. That's nice. I noticed something about your other hand, though. <laughs> Interesting. I'm just going to throw this out there, guys, for all you newcomers to the channel. This is about our, my proposal story to you. But I want you to notice this. Um, there's a very severe tan line here on this hand. And what that is is actually uh, where her wedding ring should be. So, actually, we should. It's still here. Dude, you know how to do really good clickbait for this video? I'll be like, we're getting divorced, and then just show that tan line. You know what I mean? Because I want to divorce you after. What is done? Um, what happened? I was making babies like teething biscuits that things were stuck in my ring, so that's why. I so where did you put your rings then? The stove. I'm just going to throw this out there. Those rings cost me a pretty penny back then, okay? This kind of ties into uh, how I proposed to you, right? Uh, it's been eight years now, so what is it? Like four years into China was when I start, started to like decide to settle down, right? But up until then, we were still together, right? However, people think that, you know, cut to the, you know, how we met each other was in the supermarket and you're the only one that could speak English, blah, blah, blah. You know the story, but a lot of people think because I was having all these crazy adventures and going around the place and stuff, we were still in contact, we were still dating, but it was hard. And I think a lot of people think that it was just, oh, they're meant to be. So, you know, they're always seeing each other and stuff. Most of the time you need to just chat on the phone every single day. Every it's, day. Seriously, it's like two, uh, 365 or 66 days. Depending on the year, right? <laughs> what are you drinking, by the way? Uh, milk tea. Oh, okay. Looks more like milk than tea. Fits the name, I guess. Sea milk tea. Nice. That's... <laughs> People are going to make some really bad conclusions about that, but it's okay, we're married. Um, <laughs> long story short, four years around, I was popping around, so first year was here in your hometown. Second year, I went to Taiwan, and that was difficult because to, although Taiwan, you know, according to some people, is in China, it's difficult to get there, right? Mm. And the only reason you were to get there was how? Yeah, because I was study. I'm a student in Macau, so that's really easy for me to go to travel to Taiwan, whatever, because right. because I already have a visa to stay in Macau. Right. Sorry, am I encroaching on your feminine rights here? Like, am I kind of man spreading? Yeah, of course. Okay, sorry about that. Let me give you your space. Um, <laughs> so you were, power. you were able to come visit, mm -hmm. and it was it was kind of heartbreaking. Let's be honest. I, I actually didn't think. I thought, yeah, maybe we continue dating and stuff. But when we when I moved to Taiwan, um, it was difficult. I mean, it, we weren't able to see each other very often. I think you visited once the whole year, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I visited you, but that one time that you visited it was one of the moments that I realized that I wanted to be with you. Aww. And what about you? I want to be with you from day one. way so earlier than you, so you lose. No, but when I was in Taiwan, we had this trip, and basically when she got there, I said, pack your bags, and we hopped on the motorcycle, and we rode across all of Taiwan, and it was so, so romantic. I mean, these mountain amazing. passes, these little uh, hotels we stayed at, mm -hmm. you know, super, we shared, like, some of the best memories we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And it was especially sweet because I, I worked six days a week there. It was very rare that I got a vacation, so we really used that uh, time to our advantage, remember? Do you remember that, like, when you crossed the mountain, I was, like, lost my oxygen, I fall asleep? Oh, yeah, so we went up this mountain, it's called, um, what was it, what was it called? Pehuanshan. Mm. And apparently it snows up there, and this is Taiwan, a tropical country, right? So we're going through this over, or this pass on the top of the mountain, and I realized, like, we had been chatting the whole time, we have to <laughs> scream, basically, to hear each other, right? But up there, we were going so slowly because the bike was chugging along the altitude so high that we could actually hear each other. So we were talking a lot, and all of a sudden, I realized that you stopped responding to my to my it's conversation. So cold, so wet, and so. She sweet. fell asleep on the back of the motorcycle, <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was treacherous drops down the other side of the mountain. Anyway, that's 
it's, people aren't here to watch a video about our romantic Taiwan trip. Because after that, um, I ended up, instead of coming back to be with you in that difficult year apart, I kept moving, and I went to Inner Mongolia. You all lied places. to me! Did I? Because of you, I moved back to Huizhou. And then you, the last minute, by the time I get the job in Huizhou, and then you told me that, like, Oh, sorry, I need to go to the Divi, I get enough bad press already, alright? <laughs> I'm the one that takes the brunt of the force here. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, you dick, down in the comments. <laughs> anyway, um, that being said, you did visit a couple times when I was up there, and we had a really good time, and it almost made our times more special, right? Mm. Because we'd planned these really, really epic trips. You remember, we went to um, Feng Huang, which is in uh, Hunan, mm. and I was working for a magazine at the time. Mm. So we were in Feng Huang, uh, Yunnan, and I was writing articles uh, freelance for these magazines, and you would be my little tag along. You'd translate some stuff for me and whatnot. We were finding, it's discovering all these little minority villages <laughs> and eating all this exotic food and taking photos, and it was really fun. Amazing. It's too bad we didn't YouTube back then. And then we had a really, really <laughs> kind of life changing trip, and that was when we went to Laos, right? <laughs> what do you tell what happened there? I don't think anyone knows this story. Should I tell the reason why you get Thai for? Okay. Okay. This man, he always trying his best to spite me at some point, and I told him that every food drop on the table, don't pick it up. Five to second eat. rule. Yep. Five so, second rule almost turned into five beats per minute in my heart. Yeah, the second we go there and we go to a restaurant, it's really dirty. And he did that. I was really angry. And he said, hey, hey. And yeah. that night. I'm sorry, I'm man spreading again. Yep. No keep, allowed. Let me keep it in my little man zone. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I got typhoid. And it was a problem because no one spoke English. No one spoke Chinese. But we ended up finding someone that spoke Chinese and he had studied in Kunming. Yeah, right? that's a great thing because the, the hotel we actually live in, they are, uh, their son speaking Chinese, uh, uh, study in... Uh, fluent, totally fluent, much yeah, better than mine. He study in, what's it called? In the university and his, his major was Chinese, so it was mm -hmm. flawless Chinese. He actually saved our lives. He saved our lives because my life literally flashed before my eyes. What happened was, because I didn't know what typhoid was, right? I didn't know what I had, but... When we, um, when he put me into the, I don't really remember this, but he put me in the back of a truck, tuck, tuck. a tuk tuk, and drove me to a hospital. And there was no beds; it was like indoor beds. It was like these bamboo beds outside, right? And I remember vaguely opening my eyes, and it was like the sun was just beating down on me. But I was, it was probably like 40 degrees, like 110 degrees out, right? But the sun was just pounding on me, and I felt like freezing cold. I was dying. I was so cold. And it's just sweating through everything. And I just remember coming in and out. And I remember he took my pulse, right? And he said that it was down to like ten, five or ten, I can't remember, beats per minute or something. It was, I had been so dehydrated, excuse me, and my body was in such disarray because we had waited too long to treat this. Uh, finally, they wrote an entire journal about my illness, right? Actually, because you are lucky at that mm. time. They don't really have a really good uh, a doctor. But he was but, from the main city. But that day, there is a doctor from the capital come to help out. Yeah, the it was cities. like a charity thing. He was helping the little towns that were really poor. And he spoke English, but he had never seen a foreigner before, remember? And he was so nervous or something. I remember the book, and then the the, the, the one really funny one is like soft belly. Yeah, you like wrote every detail about my body. Belly, soft. <laughs> <laughs> Diagnosis, typhoid, almost dead. We still have the journal. Uh, sorry, why do I keep doing this? I gotta get over this. Anyway, um, so I proposed to you and I, no, I'm joking. Um, that was one of those moments when I just watched how you took care of me and you forced me after that to take all this um, anti-diarrheal medicine and stuff because I was I was in and out of consciousness. Didn't you say I was just mumbling weird stuff and like I was soaking through all the bed and I had no idea. I remember just the way you the way you took care of me like really, I don't know, it was almost like it, it enlightened me. And when I went to Inner Mongolia back after that, I, I was like, why am I not with her all the time? Like it was just almost foolish. It was kind of around that time that I decided to save up my chin, my little, my Rambos, and uh, buy a ring when I visited back home, right? Now when I got back, um, I was still in Inner Mongolia. That was when my motorcycle got stolen. And it was almost like, that was, that was the last, that was it. I was like, enough, enough is enough, I'm out of here. And immediately I came back down. And this is probably the most romantic proposal story you've ever heard in your life, but 
I busted out a guitar, I blindfolded you, and I took you to a mountaintop. And I got on one knee and I just sang you a song that I had written for years. It was amazing. What are you doing laughing about? I still have the song here, I could play a little bit. Um, and I had these vows written down, but I was too nervous, I was shaking. You know, <laughs> the love of my life over here. I should probably let you tell the story. <laughs> all of that, not true <laughs> at all. <laughs> Believe what you want. Until now, I never heard what you... I never heard you play the guitar <laughs> first. Anyway. <laughs> you know, you are a really messy fella. Yeah. You never, People say. You can never keep your stuff in certain place. Right. I always need to tidy your house, your bed and stuff. So, I already know the ring <laughs> before you propose. Wait, you already knew I had the ring? Yeah. Why didn't but, you even tell me that? But. It's been three years. But <laughs> I don't even think that's my ring. Why? I was so happy to see the ring box. But I really don't think that's my ring. Why? Because the size is like bigger than my thumb. <laughs> I thought it's your mom's. <laughs> I mean, listen, <clears throat> the girl I was going to propose to was massively obese and I apologize. I had to leave her for you and I decided to, 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 you know, no, no jokes aside, I actually had no idea what your ring size was. It would have been smart for me to, to measure it. That's so, no roman uh, so not romantic in the first place. And then second, that day was my birthday, I remember. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it will be really romantic if you propose to me in my birthday. But mm -hmm. the problem is you take me to a really not romantic restaurant. What are you talking about? Toilet restaurant. And meanwhile, should be a date, and then you bring another friend along. What I wanted to do was take you to Modern Toilet Restaurant <laughs> because I wanted you to have absolutely no premonition. I was just shooting a Loudy Six video. We're showing the ridiculous toilet restaurant. We're eating poop ice cream and drinking out of <laughs> urinals and stuff, sitting on toilets. Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to have this kind of this is totally not going to happen today feeling, like. Totally not my birthday. This is the kind of crap he takes me to do. Uh, I wanted you to have that kind of feeling. Uh -huh. So then I remember I took you, um, I took you home alone. I didn't bring my friend here. I should have had him film, but I, I took you to a really romantic location. That. <laughs> my parents' compound, <laughs> right next to the lake. <laughs> took her to her parents' apartment, uh, but it was next to the lake. Mosquitoes were a biting. Bats, the bats were out, you know, chomping down those mosquitoes, and it was hot mm. and gross. And uh, you kind of forced, you know what? Before I got to be honest with you, I was really nervous. Yeah, it, before it's like it always. I'm the ones that like let let's just walk around the lake, just do some exercise, relax a bit. <laughs> I'm the one that said you, that. Yeah, it turns out you are the one said <laughs> that. And then I remember the stupid rain. It's like the oversized rain. And then I remember all the weird reaction you have. I was thinking, you just figured it out. Nah, Dude, you don't I set suck. that stuff up. I suck. At this moment, that's so not romantic. But I don't want to ruin you. And then like, when you actually propose, I just like, I still need to pretend to be surprised. And then you put, you actually would take that ring out and try to put on me. <laughs> just I can't like... even listen to this right now. I'm feeling. I feel so embarrassed and so sad. <laughs> that is so big. That I ring. Know, I really thought okay? it's your grandma's ring. I or thought it was a bracelet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why would I have my grandma's ring? It looks new. I don't know. It came in the box. Well, by the time I find it, it actually fell off the box. I don't know how can you manage to do that. So I really think that's an old ring. <laughs> anyway, we immediately got it resized, right? Yeah. And, oh my god. I'm sorry. Usually I'm good at this kind of stuff, guys. Like, for real. I'm really good at this kind of stuff. But that was, I don't know. I think it was because it was you. I'll be honest with you. No, it was because we had been together so long. And if it was proposing to a girl that I had like this severe new crush on, it would have been more 
probably organic, ironically, right? But the reason is because we're like best friends. Like we're always just hanging out, joking around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kiss on occasion, you know what I mean? <laughs> and no, you don't throw up, guys. But we're like buddies, right? And we love each we loved each other so much, but it was more of a it's not only just attraction, but it turned into a real love, like someone that you want to be with forever, right? So that's what made it awkward, is cause you're I'm trying to do all these steps that you see on TV and movies. <laughs> And it's to someone that's my friend that's just gonna take the piss and laugh about it anyway. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. Like, you, I'll counter your argu argument because I feel like a little bit of a victim here, right? <laughs> I'm gonna man spread. Um, this is my advantage as a man. I got this big wide girth. Anyway, um, I feel like my counter is that I couldn't be that romantic because you have no ability to accept romance. You are absolutely romantically disabled. Why? You are. You everything is nervous laughter after that because you think it's so awkward and weird <laughs> that someone would do that. So I know I knew how you're gonna react, and that's why I act, acted awkward. And th you should thank me for taking the bullet there. I had to take the awkward bullet. And now you're telling everyone in the world. Oh my. Anyway, I want to ask you this last question. Did you think that you were gonna marry me? No. Nah. <laughs> why? I'm not baiting you. Because you're never around. Do you remember the last talk we were saying? Because like my family is wicked tradition. They they keep thinking I'm a leftover girl. Right. In and they China, wouldn't let us get married. Like when you pass 25 and like emerging to 27 and stuff, they just like totally give up on you. They trying their best to set thing, setting me up and stuff. But... Right. With other people. Mm. That's another story for another time because that is a very, very good topic. Mm. And uh, I just give you a call. I was saying like, uh, guess, I mean like, we've been together for really long. I really uh, like just like will put this relationship deep in my heart if that doesn't work because you're never around. I, I can't see the end, you know, if you don't make the move. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And it, I guess like your ultimatum is not really what made that decision for me. I think that's why I told those stories in the beginning. It was a cultivation of all of those times that you cared about me and like how much effort you put into the relationship, calling all the time and making sure I was okay. And it was all of these kind of moments that we shared. And it was almost like a blessing in disguise that we weren't together all the time because those moments that we shared were so memorable and we had mm. such a good time together and never fighting or anything. And it was super cool, you know what I mean? Wait for it 
that's all she ever knew. Anyway, I found something. Okay. Dig it out of my pocket here. Remember this? You found it! I stole it. It was just right next to you when you were taking care of the baby. You gotcha, friend. Gotcha. Pranked you. It's a prank channel now, so. Pranked you. Gotcha. And your other, uh. Ooh, they're dirty. You need to take care of this that's stuff. That's not dirty. That's like. Is it your fingers made of dirt? No, that's not even dirty. It's Tarnish? Like yeah. Okay, well, I wanted to put these back on you, and I wanted to say that you are the best thing that ever happened to me. And I'm not trying to be romantic, I'm just being genuine. You are the greatest person I've ever met in my life, and I love you so much. I love you too. And let this be a rem reminder to you, because <laughs> we got it resized, it'll never fall off, okay? <laughs> and another reminder to finish this video and finish this whole topic is that our baby is screaming at us right now because we're sitting here filming a video. <laughs> So, we're so responsible. We're so responsible. Well, you know, they say the best parents are TV, right? <laughs> Isn't that what they say? Thank you so much, Love Winners, and I really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please remember, like I said before, I don't want to harp on it too much. Like! Don't beg for it! <laughs> please like the video, it helps us a lot. And right now in this time, uh, YouTube's like a bunch of the advertisers pulled out. And although our content's safe, Although it's safe because we're not offensive or talk about anything other than toilet restaurants and proposal <laughs> stories. Although it's safe, uh, a lot of the bigger ad companies that were paying us pulled out. So our ad revenue is taking a hit. And that's why I appreciate the patrons out there so much for actually helping us pull through. But if even if you're not a patron, one thing you can do to help us out is to go down there, leave a comment. What did you think about the video? And also maybe put a like there or a dislike. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> maybe you hated the video. If you hate it, put a dislike there. I'm not asking for likes, but if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help us out. Right? And then we can make a lot more money. <laughs> we love money. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lowners, and I will catch you. On the next one. Why do you look at me like I have I'm you need not my sure. approval? You keep saying I'm wrong. Man to, uh, <laughs> Have you wear deodorant today? Oh god. Ugh!